Olá pessoal, estou aqui então no Congresso do Desenvolvimento 2023 em Copenhague. Estou aqui com o professor Dr. Nicholas McFarland. Ele é um professor na Universidade da Flórida e trabalha principalmente com é, Parkinson atípico, atrofia de múltiplos sistemas, é, PSP, paralisia progressiva e outras doenças. Então ele é o um expert em uh, atípico ao Parkinsonismo. E and I will, uh, eu vou perguntar para ele em inglês, então, é, desculpa, vai estar em inglês. Um, duas ou três perguntas sobre atrofia de múltiplos sistemas que vocês me perguntam tanto. So, thank you, Dr. Marfalan. Can you introduce yourself to my audience? And I know there is in English. You can speak in Portuguese if you want. <laughs> I'll try. But, uh, yes, uh, can you introduce okay. yourself, please? Well, uh, yes, yes. I, I'm, I'm Dr. Nicholas Marfalan. Yeah, I'm an associate professor at the University of Florida. I work at the Norman Fixell Institute for Neurological Diseases, and I've been there for about the last decade. Um, it's a fantastic center in the middle of Florida in Gainesville. Um, and we'd love to have anybody visit here to see us. Um, it's a wonderful place, very highly collaborative. So we run a uh, multidisciplinary um, clinic for atypical Parkinson disorders or yes. other yes. Parkinson diseases. Yes. So I think we wanted to talk about multiple system atrophy. Yes, multiple system atrophy. So uh, how is uh, multi system atrophy? So uh, how is what is multi system atrophy? Um, and uh, why is it so difficult to treat these patients? And my other question is, um, what do we have? Because we're in the conference and we have some updates on it, on the topic. Uh, what is the uh, the news, uh, new drugs, or any new treatment for this condition? Yeah. Yeah. So, you yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, first of all, I want to say like multiple system atrophy is an interesting, interesting disease. It's rare compared to Parkinson's disease. I like to say it has a couple faces in the way it presents. So one way it presents is it looks very much like Parkinson's disease. And therein lies one of the problems. Um, it takes many years sometimes for patients to get diagnosed because um, they are often sometimes initially misdiagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Um, the other face of this disease is something that's called cerebellar. Um, and these patients primarily have what we call a taxic or a discoordination, um, either of speech and walking balance and uh, and their just coordination of their movement. So they look like what we call a, a taxic disorder. Um, and what's common among these two disorders is they have problems with their automatic nervous system. This is really important because they have problems with things like control of their blood pressure, bowel, bladder functions, sexual functions, sweating. Yes. And that's what's common. These things overlap with Parkinson's disease, but they actually take a different degree in multiple system atrophy. So um, it's a very progressive, more rapidly progressive disease than Parkinson's disease. I say probably two or three times as fast in terms of its progression. So making an early diagnosis is really important in these patients. Yeah. Um, but sometimes it's difficult to do the early diagnosis because it's, it's overlapping uh, with Parkinson's symptoms. So yeah. Yeah. Or, 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 attack, or attacks the disorder. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so it's difficult and people make mistakes. So um, one of the really neat things here yeah. we're learning in the meeting here at the, the um, Movement Disorder Society Congress is that there's increasing number of what we call biomarkers, both yes. tissue, so I mean like blood, Mm -hmm. Spinal fluid, these are tissues as well as brain scans um, that we can sort of hope, hope that these will help us with early diagnosis and maybe distinguish from Parkinson's disease. So we're learning there are like things in our skin, we can look at some of the proteins in the brain and our skin. But yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's fine, it's really good if you can differentiate between Parkinson's yeah. and MSA yeah. to treat, uh, you know, as a precision medicine. We're, we're really hoping that's going to be the case. So if we can detect something in our blood, or in the skin or brain scan early on to help with the diagnosis to tell a patient this is not Parkinson's disease, this is MSA. Um, and there are differences in the proteins that we're learning in the brain. Um, they look similar, but they're not the same. They're similar, not the same. Yes. So, and that may help us in the future direct treatments. So, novel or new treatments yeah. that will be targeting the disease and maybe slow it down. So, there's a lot of new trials that are out. There are actually several new trials that are out targeting these proteins or even the inflammation in the brain. And so, it's a very exciting time actually in MSA.